بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد We need to check ourselves whether this year 2020 that has passed are we still 50-50 on the road to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are 100% Human nature is to wait for things to go wrong then plan then to see how we can improvise very few people work on prevention rather than curing prevent the occurrence in the olden days there used to be those granny clocks you would have a winder and a pendulum which would work on the winding and the gravitational pull and a momentum would be created so you needed to do that maybe once a month once in two months and the clock would move on its own so the people of Iman also are so strong on the Amal that that pendulum that's moving, the, the strength is so strong that even when a strong wind comes, it won't affect it. So we've been doing Amal, our Amal was winded up, the momentum was so strong that when conditions, halat, difficulties, etc. come, it doesn't waver a person but actually it makes him stronger. So we need to check. Have we taken lessons from this 2020? We have to be careful, number one, of the masks of shaitan. The person that's wearing a mask, you can't identify properly who's that person. So have we identified and differentiated between good and evil, what's beneficial and what's harmful? Then secondly, such a deception that it keeps the good out and keeps the evil in. So was it a year where guna, masya, disobedience is still there and good has not entered my life? Thirdly, more toxic than any bacteria is the bacteria of guna and masya. Why? Because that draws the adab and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fourthly, more dangerous than any virus is the virus of Badini, the virus of wrong yaqeen, the virus of not finding Allah. Fifthly, if we need to protect ourselves from anything, then we need to protect ourselves from the evil effects of the environment of bad company. Like, wow, honey is weary of somebody who has the virus, the virus of ma'asiyat in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be so dominant that one protects himself perpetually from this. Number six, if we are taking medication to solve this problem, to cure ourselves, then we need to take medication of the love of Allah and His Rasul because the illness of the soul needs to be remedied. And lastly, if we social distance in ourselves, then we need to distance ourselves from nafs and shaitan. In the nafsa la'amaratum bisu. Naturally, this nafs, this desires are inclined towards evil. Likewise, shaitan alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas. His prime of objective is to take one and all to the fire of Jahannam. So the problem is when a person is standing high up and he is proud and he is arrogant, then he's not on his knees. So the solution is not standing up. But sometimes we have to be on our knees because we stand in with Allah. In the boxing ring, there's a objective and there's a challenge because you're challenging somebody who you know you can win, you can overpower. So you don't need to go onto your knees. And when you're on your knees, it's game over. Yo, we cannot go in the ring with Allah. Before we get into the ring, we have to be on our knees, put our hands down and say, this is not my challenge, Allah. I need you. 
So here's our obedience, our ta'at, our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased, our distance in self, ourselves from ma'asiyat in disobedience, and we start in learn, started to learn more suwar. If I know from Alam Tara downwards, if I increased my Quran hives, if I knew certain adiyah and du'as, masnoon adiyah, if I increase in that, likewise to achieve sifati hamida, good qualities, taqwa, tawadu, qana'at, or stay far from sifati radhila, bad qualities, takabur, hasad, pride, arrogance, malice, jealousy. Are we on the musalla in the masjid when the adhan goes? Are we awake in the darkness of the night? So, an example is like a father who has six sons, there is an obedient son who serves the father diligently. And even after fulfilling every requirement, he still apologizes and says, Maaf, you know, I never served you how I supposed to. That's the first servant of Allah, the awliya, the mashayikh, the friends of Allah. The more they, ex they excel, the more they get closer to Allah, the more they cry, the more they apologize, the more they feel they're guilty. Then a second son who is obedient, he does everything the father wants to, but he thinks so it's enough. So he's contented on his achievement. That I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I'm fine. That person is also at risk. The third son, he is obedient and disobedient. But when he is disobedient to his father and he is reprimanded, he asks for forgiveness. Sorry, maaf. It was my mistake. It was my mistake. So even if a person makes mistakes and makes errors, there is still room for istighfar and tawbah. The doors of Allah never closes. There is no hours. There's no timelines, there's no locks, there's no vaults. It's an open corridor to the king of kings. The fourth son is obedient and disobedient. But when he disobeys, he never apologizes. So he does what he has to do, but sometimes he disobeys. But he never apologizes, so he's at risk. The fourth son is disobedient, he never listens, he doesn't obey his father at all, but he's always maaf, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The father is still lenient with this one. And the father tells him, okay, by this date, you need to come on to this here. I'm going to give you a chance. But, so Allah is giving us a chance. But before the death comes, we need to get our books in order. Then the last son who is disobedient, he never listens and he never apologizes. When he is punished, he increases in his disobedience. When halat and conditions is sent to a servant of Allah to bring him back closer to Allah, he rebels. He increases in his disobedience. He wants to make a point. You did this to me, I'll show you. I'll show you how bad I can be. The son is of the worst of. So we need to be checking ourselves all the time. Otherwise we should not understand difficulties, conditions and halat only to be an adab. إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ خَيْرًا أَجَّلَ لَهُ الْعُقُوبَةَ فِي الدُّنْيَا When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends any good for his servant, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hastens the punishment for that servant. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الشَّرُّ أَمْسَكَ عَنْهُ بِذَنْبِهِ هَتَّى يُوَافِيَ بِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not intend good for his servant, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds on to difficulties and hardships in this world. Allah gives him respite and rope. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him to task on the day of Qiyamah, completely. The magnitude of reward, the enormity and the extent of reward 
is directly based is proportionate to the magnitude of difficulties. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا When Allah loves a certain nation, إِبْتَلَاهُمْ Allah puts them into difficulties. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى And whoever is happy, what the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will earn Allah's pleasure. وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السُّخْتُ And whoever is displeased with the decision and the decree of Allah, then he has earned the wrath and the anger of Allah. He qualifies for the wrath of Allah. So as servants, as believers, as people of Iman, we have to understand all conditions are from Allah. Wal-Qadr, the destiny and the decree of Allah, good or bad. For a believer there is no loss. Mr. Hassan Basri, Rahimullah, you say, لا تكره النقمات الواقعة والبلايا الحادثة that do not resent the calamities that come and the disasters that occur. Maybe, perhaps, something that you dislike in that may be your salvation. That Perhaps something that you prefer, you think so it's good for you, you think so it's beneficial for you, but actually it is your doom and your destruction. So the perception of insan is filled with flaws and the decision of Allah is perfect. We need to hand over our flaws, our thinking and perception is filled with flaws, hand it to the bean that is flawless. We do not know the wisdom and the hikmah of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Fadl ibn Sahl rahimullah used to say, إِنَّ فِي الْعِلَلِ لَنِعَمًا يَنْبَغِي لِلْأُقَلَاءَ يَعْرِفُوهَا There are blessings in calamities that the wise men should not, they should not ignore. There is blessing in the calamities that wise men should not ignore. They should realize and value these calamities. Why? That this is a means of erasing sins. It is a means of giving one an opportunity to attain the reward for patience. It dispels negligence. It reminds one of the blessings at the time of health, how much bounties Allah had given me when I had health. When we lose that health, then we realize that value. وَإِسْتِدْعَاءٌ tawba. It calls one to make uh, repentance, to make tawba, to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحَظٌ عَلَى الصَّدَقَةِ And it is a means of encouraging one to give charity and sadaqah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should make sure that these bounties that Allah has given us, yet let us utilize it properly and difficulties when it comes. Let us do those amal that will increase the, the rahmah and the mercy of Allah so that Allah feels pity on this banda. Let us get such a connection with Allah that Allah feels sorry and says, okay, you don't need this now. I've made your maghfirat. I've elevated your stages. I don't need to put you into any more difficulties. Let us clean our slates let us clear the chalkboard. Let us prepare accordingly based on the short life which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. It should not be that we abandon this deen. We abandon the awamir of Allah. We abandon the sunnah of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We abandon the sahbat and the company of the ulama and mashaykh. 
we abandon striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are consequences. You see, he was afraid old man went to love what his son and in that household son, daughter-in-law, grandson he used to tremble, eyesight blurred, step in faulted, they used to eat at one table but because he had shaky hands and his sight was not clear the food would fall on the floor when he grabbed the glass, the water, the drink would mess everywhere. So the son and the daughter-in-law became irritated with this behavior. So they said among themselves, we must do something about father. So we've had enough of the spilt water, spilt milk, food on the floor, no noisy eating. So they put one table in the corner. They said, this is for grandfather. They told their son, this is for grandfather. And since he had broken the dishes, they had a special bowl for him. When the family looked at dead, when the grandson looked at his grandfather, he would see a tear or two drop fall as he sat alone. And if ever he did anything, they were very fast to admonish the father. The four-year-old boy watched all of this in silence. And one evening before supper, the father noticed his own son playing with scraps of wood on the floor. And he asked the child, Oh my son, what are you making? The boy responded, Oh, I'm just making a bowl for you and Ami for Ma to eat when I grow up. When I grow up, I'm making a bowl for you. And he carried on playing. But the parents heard this and they were speechless. Tears streamed down their cheeks. And they knew what had to be done that very night. The father was back on the table. They helped him, they supported him, and they were understanding. It was no more about him being a burden, but they realized that he is a bounty. The old man is Deen, and the bowl is the conditions that will come. If we look after this Deen, this Deen is over 1400 years old and from the life of this world over six or seven thousand years, Allah Alam. Either we're going to look after this Deen and later a person won't get that same bowl. Otherwise, if this Deen is not looked after, then the bowels from Allah in different forms, when they come, there's nobody else to blame but ourselves. Allah has given us the most trusted amanat, the most valuable commodity on earth. That's why Allah handpicked men, the Rijal of Allah wa Anbiya. Wajtabakum. Allah chose the most valuable for the most valuable, this deen. Allah has given us this deen. Allah has given us this amana. It is our responsibility to take care of this amana, how Allah has prescribed. And the patient that fulfills the requirement in the instructions of the doctor, he should see results bithnillah. If we follow the prescription which Allah left with Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, then like our Allah showed Sahaba radiallahu anhum, Allah will show us as well. So let us take stock of ourselves and see how we can progress to Allah every second. The Amal for today is the chapter of having high hopes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
إِنَّ حُسْنَ الظَّنِّ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ حُسْنِ عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ That having good thoughts about Allah comes from worshipping Allah in a good way. أَنَا عِنَّ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي I treat my servant according to his expectations of me. وَأَنَا مَعَهُ حَيْثُ يَذْكُرُنِي and I am with him when he remembers me. So let us have very high ambitions and aspirations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa Allah give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.